Hello! In this special reInvent edition of IoT All The Things, we're streaming you to you across AWS on air. And we'll be talking <laughs> with our friends from UK-based PyCom, Bettina Rubek Slater and Fred DeHaro, and we're going to dive into their plug-and-play IoT devices, specifically the PyGo 1 and 2, which are probably the smallest IoT devices of their kind with so many radios. Yeah, I'm so excited to get that conversation started. Uh, there's a lot of energy this week. Uh, we have our fellow solutions architect, Piyush Bathra, standing by to moderate the chat and feed us your questions. So stick around. There's a lot of info to share on this special, special projects edition of IoT All the Things. Reinvent week one edition. Everybody and welcome. I'm Erin McGill. I'm a solutions developer here at AWS, coming to you from cloudy Brooklyn. Um, so uh, my team, the solutions team, we uh, you know create solution implementations that you, as AWS customers, can launch in your own account, um, and we architect and build these for many different cloud-based uh, to solve your technical business problems, including IoT-based and industrial solutions. Uh, I love hardware and I love software and the fact that you can put them together with a little bit of electricity and make something physical happen. I just, I just love it and I, I love being here. Uh, Tim, Tim's with me, my, uh, my, my co-host. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim Madison here. I'm a principal solutions architect for IoT, working with partners building IoT solutions on AWS. And I too like just tying my code into the physical world. So that's why I'm here for IoT All The Things. Yes, uh, and it's reInvent season, uh, and there's always such great buzz around tech and new releases. Uh, and so there's a, something that we want to talk about in our introductory things. Oh, yes. Right? So I've been waiting <laughs> Tim, for this there is for a very long so time. So excited. <laughs> yeah. Amazon EC2 Mac instances for Mac OS, a.k.a. the Mac 1 yes. instance type. I have wanted this forever. Um, very excited about it. It really helps everybody. I'm, you know, Tim and I have worked together in the past creating um, a, a Mac-based applications, and we had to actually have a machine uh, and that we could build on. But now, with this, AWS customers can actually just launch their own Macs in the cloud. Yeah, I feel like any place that's doing like Apple development has a pile of Mac Minis under somebody's desk that is you know, <laughs> yeah. some kind of shared CI/CD cluster, but. Now you don't have to do that anymore. And there's actually a pretty funny commercial that uh, that we've created that shows somebody going through those pains and kind of fixing it with uh, with the service that we've developed. So uh, very excited to not have to have Mac Minis strewn about my lab here. <laughs> yeah, and then have to wait for your time to build. Uh, the fact that we have a native integration with things like with AWS services like ELBs and e EBS will really take those pain points away. Uh, and the EC2 Mac instances are available today in regions in, well, the North, uh, North Virginia region, Iowa, uh, Ohio, Oregon, Ireland, and Singapore. Cool. And uh, you can use them as dedicated hosts with a minimum host allocation of 24 hours. But mm -hmm. um, that said, before we bring on our guests, a quick reminder to anybody who's a reInvent viewer, Tweet your comments to hashtag AWS on air, and our esteemed moderator, Fuchs, will be watching for your tweets and uh, send us your questions, whether they're for us or for PyCom. Ask whatever you want. All right, and now it's time to bring on our, de our guests. We're happy to uh, have with us from PyCom, Matina Rubek Slater and Fred DeHaro. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Good to be here. Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so, Bettina, why don't you give us a little bit of your personal history with IoT? Yeah, so um, I've been in IoT for a few years now. I'm one of the co-founders of PyCom. And for those of you who don't know PyCom, we're a full-stack IoT technology company with a laser focus on developers. And I've got Fred here with me today, our uh, CEO. Yeah, hi. So we set up PyCom five years ago. We have three offices in the in Europe, so we have the UK, the Netherlands, and also Romania. And whilst we're now going through a scale-up phase, we're very much still at heart a, a startup. Got it. So 
You know, what made it, motivated you guys to start this company? What was like the real driving factor? You said you wanted to focus on developer experience, uh, and I think that's yeah. great. Um, mm -hmm. But how'd you get here? Yeah, so definitely. I mean, we, we'd been in IoT for a few years, and we could see all the problems and the complexity developers had in getting from the initial idea to something that was ready to take to market. We've been through, we'd been through projects of 24 to 36 months, and they were running out of money and steam at the end. So and we thought there's a better way of doing this. Um, so we set about creating this platform for easy IoT development. And we now have um, a platform serving about half a million developers with uh, hardware technology that's interchangeable, MicroPython programmable, and that features a lot of the LP1 networks available today. Yeah, and it sounds like you work a lot with the, with your community and are very, you know, customer obsessed. Yes, completely. Completely yeah. laser focused on <laughs> customers and developers. Cool. Yeah, so and I I've, think uh, we talked about before, you call them pioneers. Sorry, I just love that. Yeah, name. right. Really. Yeah. Yeah, we're pilots, yeah, we're pilots right? Yeah, the pioneers. We're pilots. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. So I've... I've used a couple of the, the products in the past, as some of the other solution architects in my group have. We've used the FiFi before, the GPI, the LoPi, uh, but now you got something totally new. Uh, and I thought the FiFi had everything, but uh, now you guys got something new. So what's this new product that you've got? Well, this is it. It's called the PyGo. You can see it here. Nice. It has an OLED, uh, pins at the back for programming and attaching other sensors. It's something that's taken us um, three years to develop. And based on our uh, FiPi, so a lot of our developers will be well versed with uh, this. This is FiPi. Mm -hmm. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, Sigfox, and cellular. And uh, on top of that, we've also included uh, this mesh capability around LoRa, uh, which we call um, Pi Mesh. And so you have this ability now to connect devices um, even when you don't have an operator present in your coverage area, so to speak. That's, that's so cool. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, that's absolutely the key thing here is it, it's a full stack, a full stack application. We have the mobile app, PyLife, which we'll be demoing, as well as the cloud based <laughs> integration. Amazing. Well, speaking of demo, can we see the device in action? Yes, we can. And here's one we prepared earlier for you. Uh, so, awesome. what we're doing here, as you can see, is we, we're going to create a group here. So, um, here we're calling it PyCom UK. Once you've created mm -hmm. your group, you're able to um, to attach devices. But first, you start by inviting friends, colleagues, whatever it is that you need, whoever you need to, to join that group. So here, you'll find me sending an email to to Bettina. The notification uh, will be sent through the cloud onto her device, and and she will on her app receive soon this notification to join the group. What we're doing there is also attaching, attaching to this group the node, Pi node. So this is my Pi node. Now, what you're going to see is Bettina um, all, to, all of a sudden has PyCom UK um, set up on her port on her mobile app. She's going to go and attach her node. And what happens now is you've got the two nodes connected to your device, to your mobile phone, and you were able, using Pi Mesh, this Laura Mesh technology, to message from one device to another. So there you're gonna see the, the Pi nodes uh, flash a message. So you should be seeing mine, that's it. And I've received mm -hmm. a message, it says, hello Fred. I'm gonna to reply to Bettina. And now you're gonna see on her device on the right hand side, a messaging icon on the Pi node and on her phone, a, a very long message from what appears uh, because it was a very long day <laughs> yesterday. When this um, and there you go and and cool. so you know, he goes on and on but this That's shows really awesome. the capability of laura yeah and messaging. yeah 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 so really all your cool. communication is directly through that mesh networking That's yeah, very cool. absolutely. yeah there's a lot of projects that that need that kind of simple messaging back and forth from devices so uh, it'd be really interesting to hear how long does something like that take when somebody gets the PyGo 2 and they unbox it and they want to set up that. Uh, we saw this video here, you know, it seemed like about a minute and a half, but how long does it take from unboxing to be able to do that on your own? Yeah. 
Great question. So it took longer for me to clear my desk than actually, um, you know, get these devices yeah. paired to the, the, to the mobile. So it's literally, you know, that. a couple of minutes and that's it. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So what kind of applications do you see customers building with this new device? I know you guys are big into customer feedback. So I got to imagine before you started yeah. developing it, somebody said, oh, I wish I could do this, or I wish I, you know, mm -hmm. the enclosure was simplified or whatever it was. Uh, and that motivated you to do this. But I'm curious what the applications yeah. are now that you're seeing that yeah, people are looking to build with this. It's very much based on, on customer feedback and the experiences we've had in the last three to four years. Um, the the PyGo and the PyLife project is very much consumer orientated, um, looking after loved ones like pets or um, children or vulnerable adults or family members, but actually also holds a lot of um, enterprise appeal with um, use cases that we've been asked to uh, quote for around uh, healthcare, where you know you have patients in campus settings that need to be monitored or tracked. Um, we've got some big industrial groups wanting them for hazardous environments where they're tracking and, and monitoring their staff. And we've even had funky requirements from people running leisure and sports activity centers where they want to put them on surfers and, and kite uh, oh, surfers. Cool. Oh. Cool. Yeah. So they're 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 actually like water resistant or waterproof. Yeah, they are IP sixty between IP sixty six and IP sixty seven. We're determining it at the moment, but yeah, definitely a waterproof. You'd need that for a dog anyway. Yeah, and that really opens up the possible use cases for anybody who who buys one. Uh, and yeah. and you know you both talked about your your wide history or long history in IoT. Why did you create? this suite of products or these devices in the first place? It was the logical next step. I mean, you know, we've, we've been developing IoT hot hot for a while and the mm -hmm. PyGo seemed to amalgamate everything we had already developed and shrinking it into a smaller form factor and adding the, the PyLife app to it with the uh, interface that it has. I have, or you can do if this, then that, uh, programming on PyLife, um, oh, which awesome. would make it even easier to use. I mean, we're, we're talking of a use case now for someone who's not even a developer, they can go ahead and use it. Yeah, um, more breaking down the barriers for developers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I think when I saw the PyGo 2, the first thing I thought was, you know, I would love to build projects with the PyPy, but I don't have an enclosure, I don't have a battery, I don't have a display, mm -hmm. uh, and now this kit just comes with all of it. So now it's the, these projects yeah. are no longer just living on my desk. They can go out in the field and be shown off to somebody. So you guys have spent a lot of time making that next leap much easier for people. Um, Absolutely. So, and I know that you... That's a good point, Tim, and it's about bringing that, that product nearer to that final phase of production versus starting from a developer board. Um, right. And it's trying to shorten that, that journey even more for our developers. So if you can imagine, if we can take the product to 80% or near about, then you're, you're talking of the final application, connecting your sensors, and it becomes really a, a little tiny gateway that you can in, incorporate into any of your IoT projects. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and one of the up. things innovation go on Tim. yeah sorry yeah, sure uh, sorry I, I was just going to say one of the things that's kind of near and dear to to us that we talked about on other shows is provisioning devices and i know that you guys have yeah, a lot of um, love it. ip kind of baked into the whole platform that you've got so i was wondering if you could just do a quick demo of uh, provisioning this device because i think that's something that people forget about in the development phase yeah. and that you've taken yeah. care of yeah absolutely so here we got another video um which shows how we you're able to um, connect your device to your phone as you would your AirPods with your iPhone. Um, we're using BLE as a connectivity. Um, the, the, the device is transmitting, the phone is picking up that transmission. It pairs the device. Uh, when it's successfully paired, you're gonna see pairing oh, cool. and then paired, and then you do that for the, the next device. It's, it's really making IoT out of the box, plug and play. That's cool. And that's just an app I can download and just install on my computer. Yeah. Oh, sorry, on my phone and then just get going. Get started. Yeah, absolutely. It's called Pi Life and it will be available at the same time as the Pi Go in Q1. Okay, great. So um, you kind of touched on it, but what are all of the capabilities once I purchase this Pi Go, which I'm very excited to get? Um, what are the capabilities? What comes in the kit that I can take advantage of? 
Well, uh, a lot. So here, if you um, if we can show the camera, um, you'll see the the pie go, and you're going to be able to to see how small this thing actually is. So I showed early on the the device with the pins mm -hmm. exposed at the back, so you can connect that. Here, it's also sitting into the cradle, so for charging. But again, you can attach other sensors to it. And inside that device, you have that very tiny board. That's the the PIGO 1 board, the PIGO 2 is the cellular board which connects to that board. And, and you can see how small it is because here we've got a SIM card uh, and it's absolutely tiny. Yeah, and, yeah, and you've got all those radios yeah. packed in there. You've got GPS uh, as well, which right. you know can classify as another radio. So I would say six radios in there. Uh, and two boards, yeah. both, both PIGO 1 and 2 are the same form factor though, right? Just one doesn't have yeah. cellular? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, PIGO 1, you have... We, you have a I slide, think we have right? a, an right. image that will help illustrate that a little bit clearer. Yeah. So we, we basically we showed, go. so this is the PIGO and the cradle, uh, which we showed, mm -hmm. you can see the pins there again. Um, but the, you know, as Tim was saying, in terms of radios, you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, SickBox, and LoRa Mesh in PiGo 1. And then in PiGo 2, wow. we have all of those radios. There you go. Uh, you have the cellular on top of that. So you have all the radios you need to go and do a successful IoT deployment or to use it as uh, an end product for tracking and communication. Yeah. You really managed to pack a lot of radios in a tiny little device. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you did tease it a little bit earlier. We saw that card that had a SIM in it, um, and it said Pi SIM on it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so, so cellular SIM cards can be difficult to come by. Um, they can be expensive, mm -hmm. and the carriers are, are not super good at dealing with small order quantities. And so this is another step uh, towards move, removing barriers for, for developers. Um, PyCon will stock SIM cards and um, we'll be able to ship them out in one, twos or tens. And um, great. not only that, but we will have a, um, a roaming SIM so that it gives better coverage than just awesome. one network in one place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I can see we have some visuals there of the PyGo PCBs. I mean, they are the two PCBs that go inside the product. Um, they're super small, mm -hmm. uh, you can see. Um, I, I know that uh, perhaps for American audiences, the millimeters may not make a load of sense, but it's uh, a few inches. Um, we can always Google that. <laughs> no. The whole thing's about the size of the SIM card you showed, so I think that's a that's a pretty good yeah. Uh, yeah. international uh, yeah. way to represent it. Yeah. And I, I'm mm -hmm. super yeah. excited about the the SIM. I know that I've worked with a lot of customers that have had uh, challenges doing these kinds of things, and they buy retail SIMs, and then your yeah. POC becomes yeah. really, really expensive. So this is going to be... Yeah. Um, this is going to be a big improvement. Uh, yeah. You guys also, you built a bunch of tools, and one of them that you've uh, only lightly touched upon is PyBytes. Can you give us some more information about PyBytes? Yeah, absolutely. So PyBytes is a device and network management platform. It's something we started mm -hmm. three and a half years ago, and it's another tool for our developer base to get their project off the ground. So you can program your device remotely, you can commission, provision your device, you can manage those networks, whether you're using LoRa, whether you're using Wi-Fi, SIGBOX, cellular, it's all integrated into the portal. And once you've got that capability of flashing your device, then you want to deploy your assets. And we all know how important it is to be able to keep that device healthy. And so that's when you oh, need definitely. tools such as firmware over the air, etc. And so all of that is integrated into our portal and, and, and allows our developers to just get on and, and, and go from prototype to production in one place. That's great. So as a developer, once I have everything kind of wired up, you know, are, what AWS services can, can we take advantage of using the PyGo? So um, obviously we have direct integration from PyBytes into AWS. Um, so people can use their awesome. own account there and pipe their data through. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we love AWS because it starts with free RTOS. We know what contribution Amazon has made there to that um, embedded uh, firmware technology operating system. And, and then also mm -hmm. we have fantastic Beanstalk, which we've used to deploy uh, our whole portal. 
you know, that, that's amazing. Uh, and a lot of the tools that you mentioned earlier, uh, you talked about programming devices with the Pi Maker. How does that work? Yeah, so Pi Maker is an IDE that we developed as a plugin for Atom and Visual uh, Studio Code uh, about mm -hmm. five years ago. And only mm -hmm. up to recently, we decided to make that available through the cloud, directly integrated into our Pi Bytes platform. And that opens up a lot of opportunities, and especially in these times of COVID where you have a lot of remote workers or even from an education mm -hmm. point of view where you want to have you know, people the programming devices and, and, and so they can do that remotely. And not only that, but you're programming in the browser, which means you're no longer uh, held to what operating system you have on your device and so on. So yeah. we have a ton of examples from you know, people in, in, let's say, Africa trying to do education and learn and so on. And, and where they're able to work remotely with other centers um, back, at, let's say, in Europe, or having developers just be able to code and, and flash their devices remotely. So all of those options are open with an online ID such as PyMaker. Yeah, it's awesome. Remote programmability of this device is such a big deal, and not having to install yeah. tools on your on your laptop or having somebody, you know, the expectation that somebody has Windows or Mac OS or Linux or whatever it is, uh, is is really nice being able to do a workshop Absolutely. and not have to, to worry about that really really very helpful. Yeah. Um, it sounds like an incredible enabler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, really I just love the fact that you can flash it remotely. That's that's something I've been looking for for a long yeah. time, and you guys have done it. So that's uh, that's very very helpful. Being able to do it through the browser is a big deal for me. Um, yeah. So you know, you guys have a lot of customers that have brought devices with you know based on the PyPy Pi designs and other things to production. And when I get the Pi Go two and I show it off to my boss, and he's super impressed and says, yes, we should turn this into a product. What's the next step? Like, how do we do that? The, so PyCom, we, we have a very long history of helping customers get to market with something that's been manufactured and ready. Um, and so we, our process is very well honed. We work with factories that can uh, take 100 devices and all the way up to tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of devices. So factories are set up with us. Um, and we can backfill with um, systems integration, solutions architecture, design, uh, hardware integration, firmware code writing, everything you need to basically get that final product done. And because the PyGo is so far along the way, um, that process shouldn't take more than three to six months to really um, roll out a new product. That's an incredible speed. You really have been able yeah. to as you said, break down barriers for developers and actually, you know, yeah. go to market a lot faster with all of the supporting mechanisms that you have, SAs, SIs, and bringing fa having factories lined up. That's really, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so what what's next for PyCom and the PyGo? Well, that's a great question, Erin. So 2021 is going to be a very big year for PyCom. Uh, we've got a couple of big announcements coming in Q1. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new generation of boards, starting with a new chip from Espressive, the SP32 S3, uh, which will open up some cool applications for developers. On top of that, we bring out a new range of boards uh, based on an ARM architecture. So again, that's going to wow. be targeted for developers that need uh, uh, more IOs than they've had in the past. And finally, let's not forget, this is when we launch PyGo. So Q1, we'll see the launch of PyGo. Start buying it, you know, web shop, other resellers, <laughs> all of those guys will have it in stock. And ultimately, you know, if you want to follow everything about PyCom, make sure to follow us on at PyCom IoT. On Twitter. Great. And yeah, Twitter. If, they want, if they want to pre-order, they can, they can find your web shop right on your web page. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, so, um, let's see, do we have any burning questions for uh, Fred and Bettina? We do have one burning question, uh, and it's it's one that I, I want to ask because I, I work with a bunch of sensors and different Wi-Fi devices and stuff like that, and sometimes mm -hmm. they don't even work inside my house, and it, my house is not that big. <laughs> um, so I'm curious about the range with Pi Mesh. You've, you've talked about the fact that it's based on LoRa. Everybody has the expectation LoRa is long range. I'm curious what the, what the mesh networking experience would be like for users when they get a Pi Go? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, we've been doing extensive tests with our Pi Mesh, so that's the, the mesh based on LoRa technology. 
And obviously you have different scenarios, so whether it's urban or out of cities. And so within urban environments, we've been able to get from pine node to pine node between 2.5 kilometers to 3.5 kilometers. If you're outside the city and you have range, uh, what you call line of sight, then you'll mm -hmm. see the range extend to about between nine and 10 kilometers. So it's really a great communication tool when you're in remote areas, as I said previously, and where you don't have network coverage and you can just connect your two devices or three or four or up to 60, 70 nodes in a mesh and, and start communicating accordingly. Great. That so it'll definitely work awesome. in my house. And That's for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> no, of course. Um, and for those of you who, like me, don't know kilometers, uh, it sounded like your range in uh, in the uh, the you know far out areas, not in the urban areas, it's a little bit over six miles. So that's quite yeah, a range. Right. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, Fred and Bettina, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm sure we could talk about the PyGo and the future of PyCom for another 30 minutes. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to us. We're really excited thank and I can't wait to get my hands on one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so I think, Tim, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, just a yep. few reminders for our viewers uh, as we wrap up the first week of reInvent. Yeah, make sure you check out the AWS On Air uh, blog and get the schedule mm -hmm. and plan out what you're going to view all the live shows this week. Um, our moderator, Piyush, is going to put that in the tweet stream so everyone can get it. Yeah, and thanks again. Uh, we will see you next Thursday, December 10th at 3.30 Pacific time. Um, our guest for next week on our AWS On Air edition will be Rob Beauville from AD Link. We're really excited Very to talk excited to him. for that one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so stay with, uh, stay with the AWS On Air channel. Next, we're going to have the What's Next show with Nick Walsh and some AWS panelists, and they're going to talk to you about Amazon Connect customer profiles, which is really cool if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So have a great reInvent, everyone. Enjoy these three weeks. That's it for us on IoT All the Things. Special Projects Edition, Special reInvent 2020, 2020 Edition. 2020.